beautiful sunny day here in Newfoundland. It is currently four o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday the 25th of August and I have a few minutes to myself so I thought I would catch up and do a little floss tube video. Um, thank you for all my returning viewers and if you're new thanks for stopping by. Uh, feel free to subscribe. This is a channel all about my crafting, uh, primarily my cross stitching, but I do other crafting as well. So pull up a chair, grab a drink, grab your stitching and settle in because we're going to cover a few crafts. So where do I start? Um, it's been a busy couple of weeks since my last floss tube video. I had um, some vacation time off from work, although it was kind of a staycation. I didn't really go anywhere, hung out at the house, just relaxed, enjoyed myself, worked on my crafts, bought a second car for the household um, because our other one that our daughter was drawing, kind of driving, sorry, kind of gave up the ghost. Um, so we bought another second vehicle. Um, and I've done all kinds of stuff to get both of my kids ready for um, the next stage of their life for university and all that kind of stuff. So daughter is going to school starting September. She's decided to go back. She's going to do hair styling um, at a local um, college here, which is very close to our house. Very lucky. And son is going to be starting his first semester at university. He's got his head set on doing a double degree in business and music. So we'll see how that goes. Hmm. Have my Tim Hortons iced coffee. Had a lovely brunch this morning out with my daughter and my best friend and her little girl. And um, here's my daughter starting her post-secondary education in a week's time um, at the age of 20 and her daughter is starting kindergarten and will be five in two weeks time <laughs> so although her and I are almost the same age like we're just a few years in difference in age our kids are we're at very different ends of the spectrum as far as our kids go so without further ado let's get started with the stitching I had a look at my crafting journal. Someone did ask me what I, what sorts of things I keep in my journal. It's mostly just a log of what I work on. Um, it's like I, I keep a monthly journal and so I know what I worked on and what days of the month. Um, and so I also keep a track of any sales that I'm participating in and that sort of thing. So according to my stitching journal I worked on um, one two three one two three one two three four I think four different whips since I saw you last and I also worked on my shawl which I'm knitting and my English paper piecing hexi quilt so let's start with the stitching First things first, Folk Witch. I have to grab that because I forgot it. Of course, how would it be a floss tube without me forgetting something, right? So this is Folk Witch. i am got the needle minder in the way there now. It's still on my lap stand. Um, I did have a couple people from my last video inquire about this stand. Uh, it's just a PVC lap stand that I made myself using a written tutorial from a lady's blog. I did a floss tube video explaining how the stand is used and how it's put together, um, which you can go back through my videos. It's one of my earlier videos, so it's quite a ways back if you're interested in it. So this is it. This is Folk Witch. I have started working on this page, and I've gotten quite a bit done. I've stitched on it most days so far in August, but... Um, with work, when I was, was working, 
I could only get a few stitches in every day. So my progress slowed down on that a little bit. It's a bit confetti heavy, that page I'm working on. But, um, but the thing is, is because I spent so much time working on this in the last couple of months, I'm starting to get a little burnt out. Not completely, but so before I do get burnt out and I don't want to look at it for a month, <laughs> I've decided just to lay it down for a week and I'll pick it back up in um, next week and start right at it again. So that's Folk Witch. Death by Cross Stitch, I picked up once since the um, 24 Hours of Cross Stitch Challenge in June. This is still on the Q-Snap. I don't bother to take this off the Q-Snap because I try to work on this every week for uh, Friday off the grid. So since the June 24 hour challenge, um, I completed this border in the month of July, which you probably would have seen in a previous video. And this Friday, I started this bottom border. So I filled in the line along the bottom here and this line here, which thankfully matched up with that one. <laughs> I filled in the bottom section of this here a little bit and started this entire little bit here. And now I'm filling it in with the rest of the motif, rest of the designs. I'm stitching this one over one uh, using DMC 939 on 25 count antique white Lugana. Very pleased with how it's turning out. Love working on this piece still. Um, again, that's Death by Cross Stitch by Long Dog Samplers. So I've got a nice bit done on that. Um, and I'm really pleased with how it's coming along. I'll lay that over there, out of the way. Okay, then while I was on vacation, I think, I did work on my 18th century band sampler. This is another long dog sampler. However, it was released as a four part mystery um, cell in the Gift of Stitching magazine, which was an online digital magazine back in 2007 this was released so i think it was released in four parts and they came out in january february march and april i had started this while i was in australia with ali but this time i picked it up and started working more of the bands so here it is at this point i am stitching this one two over two and previously, I had this band and this band done. While on vacation, I started this band, this one, this one, and this one. So this brings me to, I think, a little better than the halfway point in length. Right? So I think what I'm going to do the next time I pick this up, this is the width of it. I think I'm actually going to go back and start concentrating on filling out these bands and getting those completed before I move any further. I really love the colors in this. It's very vibrant. It's a lot different than some of the other things I've been working on. Yeah, I really love this. Love, love, love. Easy to pick up, easy to work on. Yeah, really, really nice. So this one, uh, like I said, I am stitching it two over two. It is on, it is on a piece of material I got while I was in Australia that is called 28 Count Monica. M-O-N-I-K-A. It's the same fabric that I'm doing my Ink Circles Tapestry on. So I'll probably pull that one out sometime soon and start working on that one again as well. The last 
cross stitch piece that I've worked on um, is my Rosewood Manor and a Forest Grew. I don't have my chart up here with me. I just grabbed my stitching and brought it up because I just pulled this back out last night. Um, Ellen, I don't know if you watch my channel or not, but Ellen Reed, um, who goes by, she just started doing floss tube as well. Um, she goes by Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour, I think it's called, or is it Maximum Stitching Power Hour? Anyway, you'll find her if you look her up. She's hilarious. She's fantastic. She is one of the members of the Canadian band, the Crass Test Dummies. Um, very popular band here in Canada. Uh, love them tremendously. And she's a fabulous stitcher. So she has been posting progress on her Rosewood Manor piece called Inspiration, which is on my wish list. And somewhere along the way, uh, she had mentioned about uh, And a Forest Grew being on her wish list. So I've been um, goading her on and telling her that resistance is futile. And she's just going to have to jump in. And on her last video, she said that she has the chart. So here it is, Ellen, in all of its glory. I don't have a whole lot done. <laughs> um, I just picked this up again last night. I, I love this piece and I really, really want to get some good progress on it. This is stitched on 25 count Lugana one over one. So everything is, I don't know how this is going to pick it up, but if it's going to be blurry or not, everything is super tiny. I just love this willow tree. That's one of my favorites. So last night when I pulled it out, I added this bird on the shrub. I added this little tree, these two little outlined bluebirds, these two little brown birds, these two trees, and I started this deer. So I'm really hoping to get some good progress on this now, um, this week. And because I'm stitching it one over one, it's, it's not going to be as huge as the original piece is, um, which is, I'm fine with that because the original piece is quite large. Okay. That is it for all my cross stitch. Um, I didn't touch my Edgar Allan Poe sampler for the, um, dark 13 stitching. I did, however, pick up my knitting. I started uh, what was originally called a yoga shawl by Andrea Maori of Drea Renee Knits. She's since changed the name of it to the Everyday Shawl. And Bond Yarns, who you've heard me speak about before from Australia, they have a knitting challenge on for the month of August. Um, it's basically to spend um, 20 minutes a day every day for the month of August put 20 minutes into your knitting I said I can do that I thought it would give me a good um, go at this piece because I would really love to have this to wear this fall so be prepared I have done my 20 minutes a day every day I've either on my days off I've been doing my knitting in the morning while having my coffee and on my night shifts, I've been taking it to work. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're allowed to take it into work. Um, but I've been taking it into work. So if we do have some downtime on night shift, I can get some stitching in as well. So this is where my shawl is. Look at the growth of that. I'm so pleased. So you see where this little ladybug is hanging way down there? That is my starting point at this challenge for the 1st of August. So from that stitch marker all the way up is what I've knit since the 1st of August. Which I'm really pleased with because it's a lot of progress. Okay, sorry about that. Hubby called right in the middle of my... Um, 
spiel there. He and my son, um, they went, so it was our wedding anniversary yesterday, uh, 23 years married. And for our 23rd wedding anniversary, I got a weekend home with my daughter on my own because my husband and son went on a river rafting trip this weekend. So they left on Friday morning, drove across the island to Central, and then um, went river rafting, and they're on their way back um, home today. So anyway, that was him calling to let me know where they were and that they were on the way and everything was good. So... Back to my knitting progress. I'm very pleased with this. The way this shawl works is it actually is worn this way, okay? So this is one side. You have garter stitch all along the middle and then this chevron border repeats on the other end with buttonholes. So you can wear it as a wrap. You can wear it um, curled around your neck like a scarf. You can wear it uh, buttoned up around you like a poncho. You could button it up um, wrapped over your shoulders and buttoned in back and behind like a little jacket, like a little cardigan sort of thing. There's so many different ways to wear this. So I'm really pleased with the progress. I'm almost, almost halfway, I think, in the length. It's quite a large piece. So I think if I really keep cracking at this, I can have this done in September and I'll be able to wear it. So there you go, that's my knitting progress. Um, all right. And lastly is my hexi quilt. So for those of you who don't know, this. Last year was the year I taught myself how to knit. This year was the year I decided I was going to learn the paper piece. When Allie was here last May, she um, taught me the basics. And hang on, here we go. She taught me the basics and gave me a bunch of fabric scraps, which I have been making into hexes based it around a template. Um, someone asked me the size of my hexes. I'm gonna have to measure them because I'm not 100% sure. I think this is an inch and a half. Like each side is an inch and a half. Um, I'm not sure what the diameter is, but anyway. So. I have a ton of these made up. I started adding more to my quilt block. So here we go. That's how much I now have done. All hand pieced, all hand sewn. I love this. I love the randomness of this. Um, some people use the hexes to create like a flower shape. And then they sew a plain border around it to define the flower and create a, a block. I'm not. I'm just doing a random quilt. And the, not only do I really, really love just the look of that, I love the fact that you can use up um, gobs of scraps. Any kind, mix and match, throw it together, you got yourself a quilt top. So, I have completed this much of my quilt top so far and I have started um, piecing together another section. There we go with some different pieces. Really really enjoyable and because I don't need to follow a pattern I can sit down while I'm watching TV and just hand base this together. Um, it's all hand sewn. My hand stitching is not, um, let me just see if I can get this to focus. My hand stitching is not the best, but my seams are pretty, pretty good, if I do say so, for someone who knows nothing about quilting, really. Um, so far, so good. Let's put it that way. Um, nothing is coming apart. Seams are all pretty tight and snug. 
So, so far so good. And likewise, when I've um, been doing it on this piece, like even in the corners and stuff, everything is pretty snug. So what I've done is all of this interior part has the paper out of it. The only places that still have the paper are the exterior ones that don't have um, their mates sewn on the outside yet. So there you go. <sighs> all done. So there we go. That is my... Um, that's my plethora of projects I've worked on so far um, in August since I did my last video. The, oh, the other thing I could tell you about. I don't know if any of you guys remember, but I had an old leather day timer that I was pulling apart to create a cover for my uh, bullet journal because I, I like using a traveler's notebook because it's compact and I could, because of the elastic system, I could put in like a journal and a calendar, um, a craft um, a craft journal, and then a regular notebook just to keep track of random stuff or lists or what have you. But I wanted to switch this year to a standard bullet journal but still have the option of having like my craft journal separate or my a, a book of just lists and things separate. And I didn't want to be carrying around all these just like loose books. I still wanted to have them in some sort of cover. Well, I ripped apart an old leather day timer with the intent on stitching it back together um, to use. And that was working well until my tendonitis came back in my hand and I had trouble pulling the needle through the leather. Well, my husband and I happened to be out thrifting last week, and look what I found. A leather cover. Um, real leather with no binder insert. And it is the perfect, well, almost perfect size for something that wasn't made for this purpose. So now when I open it up, ta-da, my bullet journal... I've used the elastic from the bullet journal to keep it held snug. Oops, there we go. There's my bullet journal, right? With my calendar and everything in it. This, oh, of course everything's dropping out of it now because I'm trying to hold it up. The back cover of this slides into this pocket. I have some elastics put in the middle, like a traveler's notebook that I've attached my craft journal to. On the back, I have my other list notebook, which tucks into that back pocket. Then there's also a notepad. There's a pocket at the top where I can keep extra stickies or washi tape, that sort of thing, and a place for my pen. I am so happy with this. Um, it fits everything and I can just grab this and go. I can leave it laid out on my counter with my calendar open. It's perfect. Um, I got this for like three bucks <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the thrift store. Um, best three dollars I ever spent. I think that's what it cost me. Three or four dollars. So there you go. That's everything. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for spending some time with me. All of the giveaways that I had from my last video have all been sent out. For anyone who's still interested in ordering from um, the Russian company that, um, that I dealt with, and I did do a review of them, um, Mercresticom, I think it's called, she now has a store on Etsy. She did put up a, um, a coupon code, um, a discount code for any of my followers to use. If you do buy something from her store on Etsy, you can use the coupon code PAMREAD, all capital letters. That's available until August 31st. There is a link to her shop that actually takes you right to her shop 
with the coupon code already, I guess, validated for anything you add to your cart. So I can put a link to that down below as well. She also does free shipping on all orders over $70. Um, and she ships worldwide. And it doesn't take like a enormous amount of time to get your products. So that is still available until the 31st of August for anyone who wants to take advantage of that. You still have a few days left. So anyway, guys, have a good one. I hope you're enjoying the end of summer. Um, I'm certainly loving it here. We finally have beautiful weather. August is always nice here. Um, we can't guarantee on summer weather until like mid-July, late July anyway in Newfoundland. It's kind of hit or miss earlier than that. But we've had some fabulous weather the last couple of weeks. Take care. Happy stitching. And I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye.